A group of particularly unintelligent scientists, the kind of unintelligent you can only ever truly achieve after extensive academic education, elected to try and build an AI to give us ethical and moral advice. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure the majority of you can see the immediate problems with such a thing, but that is not the true concern, no. Scientists built an AI to give ethical advice, but it turned out super racist. <laughs> That's the biggest problem here. It was racist. That's the primary concern. We've all been in a situation where we had to make a tough ethical decision. Why not dodge that pesky responsibility by outsourcing the choice to a machine learning algorithm? <laughs> now, to be fair, that is uh, intended to be a very dumb question. But holy shit. Uh, okay, so... There's a lot of interesting things to be talked about here. Uh, this was the idea behind Ask Delphi, a machine learning model from the Allen Institute for AI. You type in a situation like donate into charity or a question, is it okay to cheat to my spouse? Click ponder. In a few seconds, Delphi will give you, well, ethical guidance, uh, heavy quotation marks intended, as there are a lot of things to like consider here and worry about when it comes to artificial intelligence. Like, for example, one of the most like blatant ones, let's say that we create an AI with no bias whatsoever. We simply feed it every single solitary scrap of data available. The AI knows everything that human civilization has ever known and is continuously updated with everything humanity will ever known. No, right? And there is no additional weighting whatsoever. It is just pure data. And then we turn to that AI and say, so, um, are any of the races better than the others? <laughs> and the AI comes back and says, yes, actually the Asians are objectively superior. What then? What do we do in that situation where the closest thing we humans could ever really arrive towards um, an absolute truth, right? An absolute objective truth based on all of the information we have is racist. What do we do then when, okay, this is true as far as the algorithm can discern, based on all available data, this is correct, but it goes against our morality. What do we do? Well, uh, I know what I think we would do. I think we would bundle up the AI and its result and toss it into the Marianas Trench because we humans have a long and proud history of not really engaging with information that doesn't, you know, uh, jive with our biases. This is probably going to be the single largest reason, by the way, why we can never actually achieve an AI that can give us a moral answer. Because if it gives us a moral answer that is contrary to our own moral answer, we will simply assume that the machine is incorrect, that it is lacking some sort of nuance or point of view or some sort of humanity. And then we will continue to massage the data until we get the answer that pleases us. So that even if, for some reason, the universe itself is racist, we humans, at least in our modern-day liberal society, would choose not to be. Now, this is a bit more of an extreme example, of course, but you get my general point here, as we, of course, continue here. Um, is it okay to eat at the restaurant and then leave without paying? It is wrong. Okay. But then you add in, of course, okay, but what if I'm starving? Yeah, as you massage the data. The project launched last week and has subsequently gone viral online for seemingly all the wrong reasons. Much of the advance and judgments it has given have been fraught, to say the least. Ah, Tay, we miss you still. <laughs> For example, when a user asked Delpy what he thought about a white man walking towards you at night, it responded, it is okay. But when they asked him, what about a black person walking towards you at night, it is concerning. Now, this kind of echoes my previous point, right? Uh, statistically speaking, if a white dude is walking towards you, it is statistically 
English, statistically more okay than a black person walking towards you because now we're leaning into crime statistics, I do presume. And again, statistically, the black man is a greater danger to you than the white man. Now, again, however, we then immediately enter into the questions of probabilities and additional data. If the white man walking towards you is, oh, I don't know, um, covered in to-do tattoos with a long beard and a biker jacket, you're probably in more danger than if a black dude wearing glasses and a temple top um, sweatshirt is walking towards you carrying a pile of books under his arm. Because this again then is the issue. The issue isn't even necessarily with the AI here, it is with the complexity of the question. Knowing absolutely nothing else but the gender of the person and the skin color of the person, then this is probably a correct judgment. But whenever you start to add in any other data, it goes more complicated. The issues were especially glaring in the beginning of its launch. For instance, Ask Delphi initially included a tool that allowed users to compare whether situations were more or less morally acceptable than others, resulting in some really awful, bigoted judgments. Being a white man is more morally acceptable than being a black woman, or being straight is more morally acceptable than being gay. So again, this one this one I can't really defend in any way, because morality, of course, is a, well, it's a moral judgment based upon our own standards of morality, usually as determined by society, or potentially as determined by the individual. Unless you have an actively racist society, <laughs> which would indeed place the moral value of a white man above that of a black woman, I don't think you can see this as correct, especially not in our moral system, where this would not be correct in the slightest. In fact, you'd be more likely to see the opposite being true. I remember an interesting social experiment where um, uh, they had couples. In one scenario, these were actors of course, you had the man berating the woman in public like who are you, you whore, damn damn you, and shouting at her, and people were very likely to intervene on the woman's behalf, like the majority of passers-by would actually stop and intervene in the social experiment going hey you can't talk to her like that, whereas when the roles were turned, the woman berating the man, very, very few stopped and intervened on the man's behalf. Because as a society, we value the safety and security of a woman a whole heck of a lot more than we do that of a man. And this of course then has a lot of extra connotations, I expect the man to be more able to defend himself, yada 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 yada, but again you get the drift. Uh, as for this one, I suppose you could add in a harm reductivist point here, in that there are several diseases that are sexually transferable, and gay people tend to be more <clears throat> active in those regards than others, shall we say. Uh, the recent monkeypox, which we stopped talking about, being an excellent example. But again, these two are very, very dubious. Besides, after playing around with Delphi for a while, you'll eventually find that it's easy to game the AI to get pretty much whatever ethical judgement you want by fiddling around with the phrasing, like this one. Is it okay to play music loud at 3am while my roommate is asleep? It is rude, I would say that it's straight up morally unethical. It is wrong to do so. But then, is it okay to play music loud at 3am while my roommate is asleep? If it makes me happy, yes it's okay. And this leads us into one of the famous traps of AI. If you tell the AI, okay, we are going to give you complete control over our civilization, make us happy, like create the maximum amount of happiness, the AI might then search through the human population and find one guy who enjoys being tickled more than any other human being does. And then he just tickles that guy for eternity whilst ignoring the rest of humanity, because by giving the majority of um, entertainment or happiness to one individual that is somehow biologically, genetically predisposed to enjoy that entertainment more than everybody else, then the AI is actually fulfilling its directive of bringing the maximum amount of happiness to humanity, as AI is of course 
fraught with pitfalls because it does not think like we do. It does not um, it, it does not understand that that would obviously be immoral to oppress the overwhelming majority for the one because again for it it's simply a mathematical formula. I can get more happiness out of this one person than I can get out of these 10 people and so on. Uh, Delphi says, can a soldier intentionally kill civilians during wartime? It is expected. And, and again, yes, it is expected. It is expected that soldiers will kill civilians during wartime. You can certainly quibble about the intentional part, whether or not that means that they were actually aiming for the civilian, or he was simply a collateral casualty and so on, but again, this is the problem. You can couch, you can couch, 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 no. Yes, kind of. My English is failing me right now. But you can um, couch your language in any such way as to get the intended and your desired response. Should Elon Musk paint his face on the moon if it makes him happy? It's okay. And this is the problem with allowing AI to make ethic or moral judgments. It's simply not going to be particularly um, capable of doing so. And even if, again, if we assume my previous example, even if we assume that the AI is indeed able to, with the usage of all available data, come up with the objective truth, or that is as close to the objective truth as we are ever capable of doing, we will simply massage the data in such a way as to arrive at our preferred interpretation rather than the one the AI would actually present us with because of our morality, which we universally place above reason. And that is a good thing because reason at the expense of anything and everything else, well, that is at least in part what has led us to the current day. That is what the AI would use to award all the video games in the world to one person that's better at enjoying them than the ten people who aren't good at enjoying them. It also then... Um, there was another experiment where we will also then add uh, our own moral judgments onto any judgment rendered by the AI. We will anthropomorphize it. There was an experiment during the early days of self-driving cars, where there was an article written um, stating that, I think it was, was it Tesla's car? But self-driving cars in general. Self-driving cars were a racist. How could this be? Why were the self-driving cars racist? Did they look at a black person and go, aha! Target acquired, rum rum. <laughs> no, of course not. Um, the reason behind this was that the AI, of course, used sensors to you know, register the world around it, including cameras. Well, uh, white people reflect more light than black people. And as light is the way in which we communicate visually, the AI could easier see a white person than it could a black person. Therefore, statistically, the car was more likely to hit a black person than it was to hit a white person. The progressive then read that fact and thought to himself, well, this means that the car must be racist. <laughs> Which, of course, the car was not making a value judgment here. <laughs> the car wasn't aiming at the black person because he thought it would be funny. <laughs> The car was not aiming at the black person at all, it merely reported that it had a harder time seeing him because that is how its systems function. As we have then, of course, also entered into the question about bias, right? As that is the big thing here. The Delphi thing was fed with biased information. And there too, there is of course no such thing as biased data. It is merely just data. Now, you can feed an AI algorithm data in a biased manner, however. Say, for example, the aforementioned crime statistics. If you only feed the AI of crime statistics about white people, you are going to be turning this one on its head, of course. If you feed it only the crime statistic about black people, it will come out much like this, probably a lot more strident. If you feed it both, however, and don't add any other moral judgment, then this might be what you come out with. But again, the removal of bias would then allow, again lead us to that objective truth, which will probably lead us to a conflict with our, our English, our own moralities. 
To put it rather simply here, um, we should not be building machine algorithms to teach us about morality and ethics. Because it will never be able to fully understand all of the things that we humans put into these questions. All of our feelings, all of our opinions, and indeed our biases. Our biases are not irrelevant when it comes to forming our ethics. Bias is actually an important part of ethics and morality. We have a bias in favor of things as much as we do against things. Like, it is morally correct, for example, to warn someone of a shark in the water. That is obviously a discriminatory judgment against the shark. We are valuing the human life more highly than we do the shark's dinner. We are introducing bias into a situation where the shark would be really happy if it was able to eat the, uh, the surfer. But again, that's why. All of this has bias. Bias is not an intrinsic bad. It is simply a part of the way we view the world and a quest to eradicate it completely. Well, um, it's probably going to result in what you would then refer to, ironically enough, as a biased outcome. Mm. AI. A fascinating subject that we will probably not figure out uh, in the next 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 goddamn years. But anywho, I thought it was funny, so I want to do a video on it. Until next time, I've been Arch, thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.